Copilot and Outlook can do more than you think. And I've been using it for over a year now. And these are seven things that you'll wish that you knew sooner, saving you hours each week. Firstly, we will need to access Copilot. And if you already have this Copilot icon on the top right, then feel free to skip ahead to this time here. Otherwise, there are two things that we need to do in order to get Copilot within Outlook. The first one is that we need to have a Microsoft 365 Copilot subscription, and this is an add-on license to your regular plan. And this is 40 Canadian dollars, or it's about 30 US. Once you have that, then we also need to ensure that Copilot is turned on within Outlook. We can go up to this gear icon on the top right. And on the bottom left, we'll go to Copilot. Under Copilot Control, we want to ensure that this is toggled on. And just note that your Copilot queries and Outlook content, including emails and calendar details, are not used to train our foundational models. That's just a disclaimer from Microsoft about using Copilot within Outlook. And if you do want to learn more, then feel free to follow this link here. The last thing that I wanted to note is that I will be demonstrating within the browser version of Outlook, but you will have a similar experience in the desktop app. So with that being said, let's nerd out. While we're in the settings here, this leads us to number one, which is draft instructions. So under Copilot, we can go to draft instructions and here we can use custom instructions when drafting an email. So this is a newer feature within Copilot and Outlook. And we'll just ensure that your tone and your length of email responses are tailored to you. So some examples of what you might want to add here are if you're a professional lawyer, you might want your tone to be formal, precise, and respectful, and the length could be concise but thorough. Your sales manager, be friendly, persuasive, and value-driven tone, and the length would be short to medium. If you are an IT support specialist, your tone might be helpful, clear, and reassuring, and your length could be short and instructional. If you're an educator or a trainer, then you would be encouraging, clear, and supportive, but your length could be medium. If you're an executive assistant, then your tone might be polished, efficient, and courteous, and your length would be short and to the point. So these are just some examples. Of course, these are not fixed. You can pick one and adjust it as you need, but I just wanted to provide you with some examples here. Let's now go into those instructions and add them. So I'm just going to paste the tone and the length there. And then for greeting, I always want mine to be hi. Sometimes Copilot will put hello. And I just, for me, I just prefer to say hi. So I'm just saying hi and then the person's name. And that is how I'm going to include my custom instructions for the greeting. So you can update that however you feel. And of course, these aren't fixed, so you can always adjust them later in the drafting emails, which we will come to in a moment. And then the second thing that I want to show you is this summary by Copilot. So this is available at the top of every single email within your Outlook, but it is particularly helpful for long email threads. You'll see here that Mike and I have a long email thread about the Canada Day Parade. And so having this summary by Copilot can just give you a nice quick snapshot to catch up on that email, which leads us to number three, which is the Ask Copilot. So here we can pull up the chat pane for Copilot to gain additional insights before responding to this email. Now, just note that we can close out of here. We can also access the chat pane just by clicking on this Copilot icon on the top right. So we can also expand this chat area to create more space to correspond with Copilot. And you're going to see some predefined prompts here. So for example, understand what are the key points in this email? We have this candidate day parade email selected, but if we selected a different email, then we could get different insights from that email. But the one that I find particularly helpful here is this catch up. So catch up on emails from the past day, organize and summarize by topics. So if you have had a big day and have had a ton of emails, the average person receives 120 emails a day, then this can help get you up to speed on all of the emails in your inbox. But we can also use custom prompts 
to pinpoint specific instructions. So for example, this email here for the Canada Day Parade, I have a Canada Day plan and I want to reference that document before responding to Mike. So let's just start from fresh here. And what we can do is we can go to chat history and that is just going to pull up all of your previous chats. But then from here, we can also go new chat. So this is going to give us a clean slate so that we can collaborate with Copilot and it just ensures that it's not going to get confused from your previous conversations. So here, I'm going to go look up the event plan from, and then if I press forward slash, then we are going to see a menu appear. So I can search for all. If I wanted to just filter for people, say I've specifically had a conversation about this event plan with Mike, then I could select him here. I can select files, meetings, or even other emails. So this is going to allow you to provide specific instructions to Copilot. And in our case, I'm actually looking up a file, which is this one here, which is the Canada Day Parade. I'm going to press enter. Then now Copilot is going to reference that document. So I don't even have to leave Outlook and go into my OneDrive and find this document. Copilot is just pulling me that content and information right here, allowing me to respond faster. And if you do need to select that document, then you can just click on the file here and it will open up in a new window. Now that we have refreshed our memory on the event plan, we are ready to respond to this email. I'm going to close that so we have more space. So we can go reply and then to draft with Copilot, there's a couple of things that we can do here. You'll see some suggested Copilot prompts at the bottom. So you can just click on one of those to streamline the process, or you can click this little Copilot icon within the message body, or we can use the shortcut key, which is Alt I. That will bring up the message pane. So we'll see here that there are some suggested prompts and you'll notice these ones with the little sparkles. Those ones are AI generated based on the contents of the email. Whereas the ones below here are just generic. So short and friendly, request information, give update announcement and create newsletter. But we can also provide custom prompts. And when I think about writing a custom prompt, I think about providing instructions to an imaginary assistant. Here, you're just going to provide the direction of how you want the email to go and the specific key points that you want to highlight. So here, I'm just letting Mike know that I'm going to send him an invite for a meeting on Wednesday, and then also let him know that I'm going to send an email to our supplier regarding some unfortunate circumstances. So we'll just press enter. Copilot is now going to Take that prompt and it is just going to fill in all of the details. You can review all of this content here. I definitely recommend it. If we scroll on down, we'll see that we have some additional options. So if you're happy with this, you can keep it. If you're not happy, you can discard it. If you want to retry, then Copilot will regenerate a response. We can make it shorter, longer, or even adjust the tone. So those are some predefined prompts that you have there. In this case, I'm going to keep it. But what I want to do is I want to edit just this specific piece of text here, which leads us to number five. And so this, again, is a new feature within Copilot in Outlook where we can adjust specific areas of text. So we can select it and then we can just click this little Copilot icon. And then now we can just say, make it shorter. And then at the bottom, we have replace, which is going to replace the, the text that we just highlighted. We can insert it below. So then you would have both or you can discard and then we have the similar ones below. So I'm going to replace that text. And that is how we can adjust just specific areas of text. And just note that you could even provide specific instructions, right? So we just went for the basic, which was to make it shorter, but you could specifically say, add this or remove that or adjust this so you can customize it however you need. So this email is now ready so we can go and send this email to Mike. Now that we have sent that email, we have two remaining items that we told Mike that we would do. And the first one leads us to number six, which is how we can schedule a meeting with Copilot. So from this email pane, on the ellipses on the top right, 
we can go to other reply actions and go schedule with Copilot. Alternatively, from the ribbon under respond, we can go schedule with Copilot. So this is going to pull up a meeting invite. It is going to pull a title that it is suggesting, and then it's going to automatically add everybody that is on that email, as well as include a summary of an agenda as well as the email thread for easy reference. And so we can just go and insert those contents at the bottom. So this streamlines the meeting creation process. Now, this is pulling up the most immediate meeting that we could have, but Mike and I said that we were going to meet on Wednesday. On the top right here, I'm just going to toggle to Wednesday and I'm just going to click in here to pull a time. We can see that everyone is available. We can also select this find time and that's going to pull some other suggested times that both parties are available around that selected time within the area. So let's go with 11 a.m. and then now I can send my invite. Now this video today specifically focuses on Outlook, but if you do wanna learn how you can use Copilot specifically within a Teams meeting, then I have done another tutorial on that and I will include a link in the description. So the last piece that I said that I would do for Mike was to send that difficult email to our supplier, which leads us to number seven, which is coaching. So here, let's start a new email and then we'll click this co-pilot icon. And here I'm just going to provide a custom prompt of how I want Copilot to draft this email. Now we can go and keep it. Now, for the coaching, we can go up to this Copilot icon on the top right and go coaching. And then now here, Copilot is going to analyze the email. It's going to review it for tone and clarity. And we can see that it has given specific feedback on tone, reader sentiment, and clarity. So this is a really good tool. If you do have a difficult email and you want to be really mindful about how the reader is going to respond or react when they read your message. And then at the bottom here, we have a couple of options. So we can apply all suggestions, we can just ignore this, or we can retry. So I'm going to apply all of our suggestions. Then now Copilot is going to regenerate that email. We once again have those options to replace or insert below. So I'm going to replace all of the contents here. And then now my email is ready to send. And hey, if you wanted to check out that video on how to use Copilot within Microsoft Teams, specifically around Teams meetings, you can check out this video here.